Hey SolidWorks users, so here we are in the middle of fall, the, the leaves are changing, there's a little nip in the air, but that means we're deep into one of the best seasons in sports. Football season! That's right! So this month we're bringing you this tutorial series where we're modeling this kicker's tee using a combination of surfacing tools and some essential modeling techniques in SolidWorks. And as you can see we'll be 3D printing it and using a pretty unique uh, technique for adding some color to this recessed area. So let's get started. Open up a new part file here and we're going to kick off this model with an outline sketch on the top plane. Here I'm drawing a few center lines dimensioned to the length of our kicker's tee. And I'll just sketch half of the T using a series of arcs and splines and mirror it across the center line. We'll start laying out the unique shape of the T using surface tools, so let's enter the extruded surface tool found in the surfaces tab of the command manager and extrude this outer surface 1.25 inches from the sketch plane. Just like with an extruded solid, we can add draft to extruded surfaces, so let's add an inward draft angle of 8 degrees. The top surfaces of the T have a unique ramp shape, so we're going to use the boundary surface tool to create those surfaces in one shot. So we first need to create a few profile sketches. First, sketching on the right plane, let's sketch a construction line that we will reference later for construction planes, and we'll also snap to these sketch points in a few of our profile sketches. Exit the sketch, and let's create a reference plane parallel to the front plane, and coincident to this front point here. Now let's create our center profile sketches in preparation for the boundary surface. Sketching on the front plane, let's draw an arc shape with a few flat landings on the top. I'm just making sure the center bottom of the arc is coincident with the reference point we set in the previous sketch. And I'll set a few dimensions to set the width of the arc and the height of the flat landings. Now let's create a similar sketch, which will act as our front profile sketch on the newly created reference plane this time with the flat landing set a little lower than the previous profile sketch. Now sketching on the right plane again, I'm just sketching some collinear lines to create a linear ramp shape the end of this sketch should terminate at the rear surface of the T. And here I'm just making sure my sketch points are snapped to the top points of our first two profile sketches. We'll create a second reference plane on this point, which we'll sketch our last profile sketch on. Finally, let's sketch our last profile sketch on this rear plane. I'm just making sure the flat landings are coincident to this rear point we created in the previous sketch. And now exit the sketch, navigate to Boundary Surface in the Surfaces tab, and select the three profile sketches in order. As you can see, laying out the profile sketches in this way has given us a nice ramp shape. Hit OK to create the surface. Now to ensure this surface protrudes all the way through the first surface we created, let's use the Extend Surface tool, and select the front and rear edges to extend this surface both directions 1.25 inches.
To trim these surfaces down to their final shape, let's enter the Trim Surface tool. Here we'll ensure the Mutual option is selected under Trim Type and select both of the surfaces. You have the option to then keep or remove the selected portions of the surfaces, which is really just a personal preference thing. In this case, I'm going to use the Remove Selections option, and as you can see, when you hover over sections of each surface, it highlights the area in orange that will be removed. So we'll just remove these two chunks here. Click OK, and as you can see, this operation not only trims the surfaces, but it merges the trimmed surfaces together. Now to wrap up this part of the series, we'll convert this surface model to a solid by filling in the bottom face using the Filled Surface tool. Once inside this tool, instead of manually selecting all of the edges to create the surface, I'm simply going to right click on one of the open edges and choose the Select Open Loop option to quickly select all of the open edges. And here under Options, ensure the Merge Result and Create Solid options are checked and hit OK to create the surface. There we have our initial layout as a solid body rather than a surface body. You can confirm that your part was successfully converted to a solid by making sure it lies in the solid bodies folder in the history tree. Thus concludes part one of our series. We have a simple start using some simple surfacing techniques, but from here on out we'll be using essential modeling tools to add the details to this initial shape. Stay tuned.